Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tastitudes.com. In this tutorial I will be demonstrating how you can create a wool texture text effect like this in Adobe Photoshop. Along the way we are going to be using some basic techniques in Photoshop such as using masks, using a custom brush and applying some shadows to get the overall effect. So here I have a composition I have created earlier and if I zoom in and take a closer look at the edge of the text, you can see I have this nice, soft, furry outline. And if I zoom out a little, I hope you agree that this looks fairly realistic. Now before we begin, I want to explain that to create this soft, furry outline, I'm actually going to be using a custom brush. Now these are the two custom brushes we are going to be using in this tutorial. Above, we have the wool brush, and I have carefully prepared this brush to have a subtle feather effect, but at the same time contain some elements of fur. Below we have the shadow brush. This brush is going to make it really easy for me to create the shadows under the letters later on. If you wish to have a go at this yourself and follow along, you can download this composition, the brushes and all the wool textures. The links are in the description. If you wish to follow along with this tutorial, be sure to download and install the brushes first. The instructions for both Mac and PC are contained in the downloadable project folder. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to focus on one particular letter. As you can see here in the layers panel, each letter is treated separately and exists in its own layer group. Now the same technique is applied to each letter but the only difference is the wool texture used. So I'm going to come over to a separate document where I will be focusing on this letter, the letter C. So taking a quick look in the layers panel, at the top we have the layer group called letter C. And if you look closely, you can see that this group has a layer mask applied and this contains the wool texture and the shadow effect. Now keep in mind, that this mask has been applied to the group and not an individual layer. So this means that this mask will be applied to the entire contents of the group. And it's this mask that creates the soft fluffy outline. So inside the group, if I toggle the visibility of the shadow, we can see the appearance looks flat and rather two dimensional. So I'll be showing you later how to go about working with shadows to add more depth. So with all that said, let's make a start. So here I am in the template document. This document is also in the downloadable project folder. The link is in the description. So the first thing to do is set up your text guide. Create a word or letter you wish to apply your effect to. I have the letter C here, and the font I'm going to be using is called Val, and you can download this for free. But in case you don't have this font installed, I have rasterized the text layer, so you should be able to follow along just fine. Though, if you wish to have a go at some other letters, I have provided the link in the description for you to download and install the font. Once you have composed your text, it's time to open up your texture. So, I have this red wool texture here, and I'm going to select all by pressing Command A and Command C to copy. Then, I'm going to press Command W to close the document. In my new document, I'm going to press Command V to paste, and that should appear as a new layer, and I'm going to rename this layer to Wool Texture. Now, depending on how big your texture image is, you may need to scale your sample up or down. In my case, I need to scale this up. So I'm going to press Command T to activate Free Transform. I'm going to press and hold Shift and Alt on the keyboard, select the top right hand point and drag to scale up like so until my texture is covering my letter. Keep in mind to give yourself a good buffer. Don't scale it right to the edge. Make sure to scale your texture bigger than your text letter. Next, with the wall texture layer selected in the layers panel, I'm going to press Command G and this is going to place this layer into a layer group. I'm going to name this group to letter C. So now I have the letter guide 
on the layer below. What I'm going to do next is press and hold command on the keyboard and click the text layer thumbnail and this will create a selection of the outline of the object on this layer. So in my case, I now have a selection of the letter C. With this selection, I'm going to click on the group folder letter C and with this selected, I'm going to apply a layer mask. I can do this by coming to the bottom of the layers panel and clicking the add layer mask button. And upon click, a layer mask has been created from the selection. So looking in the mask layer thumbnail, we can now see the white area and the black area. If you're new to masks, whatever is black is hidden and whatever is white is revealed. So we just used the selection of the text guide to create this mask. Excellent. So now I want to make the flat wall sample look a little bit more round and bulbous. Right now it's looking too flat. I can do this by selecting the wall texture layer within the group, coming to filter and selecting liquify. Upon click, a new window will appear with a preview to the left and the properties to the right. I'm going to select the bloat tool from the far left then I'm going to push the brush size up to about 1300. Now, if I move my mouse cursor into the preview window, I can get an idea of the brush size. Over in the properties, I can also toggle the brush density, but for now I'm going to leave this set to 50. So I'm going to start to click on the texture to add some bloating. I'm going to click a few times on the top and the bottom and perhaps the side here and we can now start to see the bloating effect taking shape. If I change the density, I can concentrate the bloating effect. I will just click that once here. I don't want to overdo that. And once I'm happy, I will press OK. So if I just press Command Z to undo that back and forth, we can see that using the liquify tool has given the wool a subtle bulge effect. Excellent. Depending on what letter you are working on, this may require a little experimentation. So next I'm going to zoom in and it's time to focus on the outline of the letter. Right now it's looking very sharp. To do this I'm going to modify the mask applied to the group. So I'm going to click and make sure I have the mask thumbnail selected on the group. Now, I'm going to use the custom brush to create the soft, fluffy outline. I'm going to press B on the keyboard to activate the brush tool. Up in the control panel, I'm going to select the wall brush. At this point, you should have this installed. With the wall brush selected, I'm then going to click on the brush presets icon just to the right of the brush library, and up should pop your brush properties window. Now I'm about to make some modifications here to my brush. So I'm going to click on Shape Dynamics and I'm going to change the size jitter to 30%. I'm going to change the angle jitter to 30% and I'm going to change the roundness jitter to 30%. This is going to create a more random effect when I begin to use my brush. So now I have prepared my brush, I'm going to make sure my foreground color is set to white and the opacity of the brush is set to 100% in the control panel. And I can toggle the brush size like so. Now, before I start to click, I can see the preview of my brush on the screen here, represented with a gray outline. I'm going to place my brush, so about a third of the brush is on the outside of the text, like so. Keep in mind, the bigger the brush size, the more evident the texture will be. So I'm going to toggle my brush size like so to get a subtle effect. Then I'm going to begin to click and draw around the outside of my text like so. And as you can see, as I click and draw, I am creating a soft, woolly texture around the outside of my letter. What I am effectively doing here is modifying the layer mask to reveal more of the woolen texture below using this fluffy soft brush. Soon you should end up with something that looks like this. So that's how you can create the woolly texture. 
though right now that's looking awfully flat. Now I'm going to add some shadow to give this image some depth. To do this, I'm going to select the wall texture layer within the group. I'm going to press and hold Command and Shift on the keyboard and press N. And this is going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this layer Shadow. I'm going to press B to activate the brush tool. I'm going to select a feathered brush. I'm going to make sure the opacity is set to about 15%. And I'm going to toggle the brush size down like so. Now, I'm going to begin to click around the bottom of my letter like so. Now, because my opacity is set to 15%, I can click to get a gradual blend like so. If I toggle my brush size, I can also click up here to get some shadow effects and build these up like so. If you think the overall shadow effect is too much, I can simply toggle the opacity of the level up here in the top right corner of the layers panel and tweak that slightly. And that's looking pretty cool. So because we created the shadow layer inside the letter group, the mask has also been applied to this layer. So no matter how much I click outside the letter area, it will not be seen. So that's pretty convenient. Finally, I'm going to add a shadow under my letter. To do this, I need to create the shadow layer under the woolen text letter. So I'm going to come down to select the layer under the group and press and hold command and shift on the keyboard and press N to create a new layer. I'm going to call this letter shadow. I will press B to activate the brush tool and this time I'm going to select the second custom brush. And as you can see, this is a wide, flat and feathered brush. So I'm going to change the opacity to 10% this time and toggle the brush size so it's a little wider than the letter itself. I'm just going to click once or twice to place a light shadow. Then I'm going to toggle the brush size down and click another few times for some more shadow. Tweak the brush size again, click a few more times. And by doing this, we will create a nice shadow effect under the letter. I'm going to keep tweaking the size down and clicking until I end up with a dark area under the letter. And that's how you can create a woolen type texture in Adobe Photoshop. So in this tutorial, we learned how we can use a custom brush and by modifying the brush, we can achieve a particular texture. In this tutorial, I applied this texture to wool, but this could easily be applied to other textures too, like fur, leaves or hair, for example. It simply comes down to your imagination. If you would like to learn how to create a custom brush and experiment with this idea, then you can watch a more in-depth video on how to do this. The link is in the description. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you liked the tutorial, hit the like button on my Facebook page and come and add me as a friend. Don't forget, you can download the documents you saw in this tutorial. All links are in the description. That's it for another video brought to you by tastitutes.com. Thank you for watching. Have fun, guys, and I'll see you next time.